Pennsylvania needs a conservative who will put America first, one who can reignite our divine spark, bravely fight for freedom, and tell it like it is. That's why I'm running for Senate. I'm Dr. Oz, and I approve this message. Beta! Well, you heard it here, folks. Dr. Oz, another celebrity, is getting involved in politics, and I am just so enthusiastic about this news. I, I couldn't be more excited. I think that more celebrities, in fact, should be getting involved in politics. I'm obviously being sarcastic, but this is really frustrating because we all know that he's immediately going to have an advantage just because of who he is, because he has name recognition, and it's clear that he doesn't really have any reason to be running. So we'll go through his platform. But to me, I get the sense that he's a mixture of a corporate Democrat and a traditional conservative who thinks COVID-19 is bad and it's a serious disease that people should be concerned with. But he's also against any mitigation measures to prevent the spread of the virus. So he's a little bit all over the place. But we'll look at the write-up that he did for Washington Examiner, where he kind of explains why he's running. He writes, We have not managed our crises as effectively as past generations. During the pandemic, I learned that when you mix politics and medicine, you get politics instead of solutions. That's why I am running for the U.S. Senate to help fix the problems and to help us heal. The reality of our challenges has crystallized during the pandemic. Over 750,000 in the United states have died from the virus a devastating toll for families and communities many of those deaths were preventable covid 19 became an excuse for the government and elite thinkers who controlled the means of communication to suspend debate dissenting opinions from leading scholars were ridiculed and canceled so their ideas could not be disseminated instead the government mandated policies that caused unnecessary suffering the public was patronized and misled instead of empowered we were told to lock down quietly and let those in charge take care of the the rest. When we tested positive for the virus, we were also told to wait at home until our lips turned blue and we got sick enough to warrant hospitalization. To be clear, this is not a typical medical protocol. Elites with yards told those without yards to stay inside, where the virus was more likely to spread. And the arrogant, closed-minded people in charge closed our parks, shuttered our schools, shut down our businesses, and took away our freedom. America should have been the world leader on how to beat the pandemic. Although we had some moments of brilliance, such as the gift to the world of the mRNA vaccines made possible by President Donald Trump's Operation Warp Speed, many great ideas were squashed. That's not the America my parents came to. That's not the one I grew up in. That's not the one I want to leave behind. Now, I'm not surprised that he's sucking off Donald Trump. You kind of have to kiss his ring if you want to be successful in modern Republican Party politics. But it's bizarre to me because he starts one way and then he takes what appears to be a sharp turn. So he talks about how all 100 uh, or 750,000 deaths due to COVID-19 are preventable. But then he says, well, all the things that we did to try to stop COVID-19, they're bad. Okay, so what's the proposal. I don't get what you want us to do. He doesn't actually ever say what specifically can be done to mitigate the spread of the virus. And he claims that these deaths were preventable. So how do you prevent more deaths? He doesn't actually say. And if you look at his website on the issues page, doesn't clarify there either. So it seems like he thinks COVID-19 should be taken seriously, but at the same time, we shouldn't really do anything. We shouldn't close schools. We shouldn't do lockdowns. Nothing. Now, the reason why people were telling those infected with COVID-19 to stay out of hospitals unless they were really sick was because hospitals were being overrun. So don't go in if you're not feeling like you should be at the hospital. I mean, of course, people should seek out medical care if they need it, but he's being a little bit disingenuous here, and he claims elites with yards told those without yards to stay inside, where the virus was more likely to spread. But it's not like public officials were saying, go to other people's houses. All of you congregate indoors at the same place. They're saying stay home so we can slow the spread. So the issues that he takes are a little bit irrational to me. And it seems contradictory. If you care about the virus, then you should, in theory, support mitigation measures. Now, if you have different mitigation measures, okay, what is it? Do you support vaccine mandates? Do you support... Uh, education programs to explain to people how they can best protect themselves. What's your solution? He doesn't have a solution. However, having said that, 
he's still at least better than Republicans to even acknowledge that COVID-19 is a thing that we should take seriously because the Republican Party at large, most Republicans, this is a generalization, they've downplayed it. And I've seen people, not necessarily many public officials, but just on social media posts where they'll talk about uh, virus and new case numbers and whatnot. I'll see Republicans chime in saying, yeah, but that, that number is overblown. The 750,000 deaths, some of those are non-COVID deaths and they're just attributing it to COVID-19. Like people are so conspiratorial about this. So for him to seemingly not take that stand is important. He doesn't necessarily seem to want to be placed in any particular ideological box with respect to COVID-19. And notice how insane it is that I'm even talking about an ideology as it relates to a global pandemic but unfortunately that's the state of american politics so that's that's where we're at but at the same time he still has kind of at least virtue signaled and paddled to these really popular republican trends that aren't effective at handling COVID-19. For example, there is hydroxychloroquine. So Media Matters reports, Dr. Oz solicits Fox News viewers to join an at-home hydroxychloroquine clinical trial. Now, this headline makes it seem as if he was encouraging people at home to basically try hydroxychloroquine and conduct their own little makeshift experiments at home. But in actuality, he was telling people that they could participate in a large-scale study by the University of Minnesota that they were conducting at the time when he said this. Now, of course, I mean, he's obviously pandering to Fox News' viewers who likely bought into Trump's hype about hydroxychloroquine, but I think it's a little bit less nefarious than the headline insinuates. But to be fair, you do have to be on high alert when it comes to particular uh, medications or cures, if you will, that are being peddled by Dr. Oz, given his history of hawking scam products on his television show back in 2014, after the FTC cracked down on the types of weight loss products that he was hawking on his program. It's not unreasonable to doubt his sincerity here. So in a 2014 article for USA Today, Ali Mutnick explained, lawmakers at Tuesday's hearing specifically took aim at Oz's promotion of pure green coffee beans, which claims to help users lose 20 pounds in four weeks, Jesus Christ, and 16% of body fat in three months. The FTC sued the product's Florida-based makers in May. Dr. Oz also aired a segment on raspberry ketone supplements, which was also faced with FTC charges of false advertising. Oz told lawmakers, he's been victimized himself by companies using his quotes or his likeness out of context as an endorsement. Except that's not why you were testifying before the FTC. They were grilling you for products that you were hawking on your show. So I don't think that the criticism uh, being attributed to him as it relates to him peddling hydroxychloroquine is necessarily sound. But again, when you have a history of being a scam artist and hawking bullshit products to your viewers, you, you've got to be kind of rigorous in your evaluation of that person. But here's what matters the most. Uh, his policies. What is he running on? So I looked at his website and I was surprised to find an issues page. And sure, there's only nine issues that he lists. And each of these issues, he only talks about them for about a paragraph, which is not enough. But nonetheless... It's better than most Republicans. So when it comes to, quote, fixing health care, he says he's bravely argued against costly drugs, even as it made him a target of drug companies. Oh, how brave of you. As a U.S. senator, he'll work to dismantle policies that lead to more expensive prescription drugs for our seniors, and he'll expand access to private sector plans. So essentially, he supports Obamacare. Maybe he won't specifically say that, and that's fine because the GOP's base won't know the difference. But, I mean, this sounds like Obamacare, and I hate to break it to you, bud. It's not super brave to say that the cost of prescription drugs uh, is just too high. That's just, that's a fact. That is a fact. But nonetheless, um, when it comes to his response to COVID... Again, no information here about how he would respond. He basically just says the things that he said before. Uh, he's a doctor. He knows how bad COVID is, but masks and lockdowns are also bad. I mean, this doesn't really deviate from Republican Party orthodoxy. So the only difference between him and the National Republican Party is that he takes COVID-19 more seriously in the sense that he acknowledges it is indeed real and not a hoax. But, I mean, if you don't want to do anything, then functionally... How are you different than Ron DeSantis? Ron DeSantis also acknowledges that COVID-19 is real, but we shouldn't do anything about it. No mask mandates, uh, no mitigation measures whatsoever. 
So aren't you just the same as him? I mean, I, I don't understand it. Additionally, he's anti-abortion, he's pro-border wall, he loves Jesus and wants to expand the role of religious institutions in the United States, which is kind of a hint that he wants charity to replace welfare programs. That's the implication, at least. He believes austerity good, China bad. I mean, he's pretty standard as a Republican. He's less Trumpian, and he seems more intelligent, but he's just... There's nothing special about him, but immediately he has an advantage because of his name recognition. And this race in Pennsylvania is incredibly important because it's going to determine who controls the Senate, or it's going to be one of the states that controls or that determines who controls the U.S. Senate going forward. And I'm anticipating a loss from Democrats, but, you know, it, we'll see how he does. I don't like him. But I will say that compared to other Republicans, he's no Marjorie Greene. He's not even a Donald Trump. He reminds me of the 2008-2000s type of conservatives, albeit maybe a little bit more reasonable, less in your face with their push for theocracy. Um, so, I mean, if he is the new celebrity that kind of um, gets Republicans to worship him and forms this cult of personality— Certainly, cult of personalities in general are bad in politics, but he's better than Trump, so we can shift his base to Dr. Oz. I think that would be preferable, just because it's, you know, orders of magnitude more sane than Donald Trump. That being said, that's not going to happen. Nobody is going to um, dethrone Donald Trump. I think that he's got the GOP base on lock until the day he dies. Uh, and then, whoever gets it next, who knows. Uh, but, you know, to try to speculate how well Dr. Oz will do. I think he has a good shot, but, I mean, there were celebrities running in the California recall election. Caitlyn Jenner, for example, and she did terribly. So celebrities don't always win, but still, they do have an advantage that normal Americans don't have. They have the money to make themselves prominent. And I, I don't want more celebrities to get involved in politics. We just dodged a bullet with Matthew McConaughey, who put out some, like, two- or three-minute video explaining how he's not going to run. We have The Rock, you know, kind of playing with the idea of maybe getting involved in politics. Just stay the fuck out of politics if you're a celebrity. I mean, for the love of God, we don't need you jumping in because you think you're more important than you are in actuality. Just stick to what you know. Stay in your lane. Dr. Oz, I mean, it's no different. You're a TV doctor. Keep doing that. You don't need to be involved in politics. I mean, you may be more sane than other Republicans, at least based on what I've seen here. But, like, uh, we we don't need any more celebrities in politics. But, I mean, that's, like, the least of our concerns right now in politics. So, I don't know. <laughs> Run and, you know, we'll, we'll see how you fare in a Republican Party primary. Are you um, crazy enough? to appeal to the far-right base of the Republican Party. Will you kiss Trump's ass enough to secure victory? That's yet to be determined. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.